so far in the lectures what we have discussed is structure of a system whether it is atomic structure or we discussed the energy levels of a harmonic oscillator, we also discussed particle in a box and initially this was done using Bohr model, initially atomic structure was discussed using Bohr model and it taught us some things. It led us towards applying quantum conditions to angular momentum and things like those. It uh, taught us to apply quantum conditions in terms of uh, angular momentum and then this was generalized to Wilson. Sommerfeld quantum conditions in terms of action being quantized and by analyzing atomic structure and the related spectrum, we also introduce the idea of electron spin and associated magnetic moment. I pointed out at that time that the magnetic moment of uh, spin is twice as much for a given angular momentum as the orbital magnetic moment. And what you learned in the all this and finally, we, we also said something called the Pauli exclusion principle exists that says the, that no two electrons can have all the quantum numbers the same. Notice in all this the mechanism for radiation has not been discussed. All that has been said in this is when an electron makes a jump from an upper level, let us say an E upper to E lower, it gives out an energy delta E which comes out in the form of a photon and therefore, the frequency of the outcoming light is delta E over H. That is all that has been said. It has not been said how they radiate, what makes them radiate and so on. Contrast that with classical theory, contrast this with classical theory and the radiation mechanism in classical theory is given in electromagnetic theory or electrodynamics, where it is shown that an accelerating charged particle radiates electromagnetic radiation. So, any time you have a charged particle it accelerates it gives out radiation, but what happens in, in quantum mechanics? What should be the mechanism? And that was not clear and the first step in this direction was taken by Einstein in his now famous Einstein's theory of stimulated
emission. This also laid foundations for development of lasers. So, next two lectures are going to be devoted to this mechanism of uh, radiation and lasers, introduction to lasers. So, let us see what happens what Einstein did. What Einstein said was suppose there are two energy levels, let us call them with energy level 1, level 2 with energy E 1 and E 2. Right now, just consider two levels. Then, if an atom is in the upper state, if an atom or a quantum system has energy E 2, it will give out radiation and come to lower energy E 1. This is what we see classically also something that is excited something it that has more energy gives out energy and comes to lower energy. So, that is not a big thing. What is big is that this coming down to lower level is probabilistic, it is statistical, it has a probability of coming down. So, Einstein introduced the idea of probability in this radiation, right. So, it is random. If you recall from your 12th grade, you must have been introduced to the uh, phenomena of radioactivity, where we say that a nucleus decays in a probabilistic manner, where you see that rate of decay is minus lambda n, right. This is from radioactivity, radioactivity. In a similar manner, although unrelated, what Einstein said is take, take these two energy levels E 1 and E 2, then an atom with energy E 2 will radiate with probability a 2 to 1 delta t in time delta t. So, the probability of the atom radiating is going to be A 2 1 delta t and therefore, if there are n 2 atoms with energy E 2 delta N 2 equals N 2 times A 2 1 delta T atoms would have radiated in time delta T and come down to energy level E 1. And therefore, you can write that d n 2 by d t is equal to minus A 2 1 n 2. How I got this is like this, I divided delta n 2 by delta t and it came out to be a 2 1 and minus sign because delta n 2 by delta t is negative, n 2 is decreasing. And this is known as spontaneous
radiation. Nobody told the atom to do it, it did it spontaneously, spontaneous means by itself, it just there was a probability per unit time that it would decay to lower energy level and it did. So, this is what would happen. So, all the atoms that have been excited to an upper level would radiate and come down to lower energy level and the rate would be like this. So, if you were to plot it, if only this thing happened, so I have d n 2 over d t equals minus a 2 1 n 2 and a solution is going to be n 2 equals n 2 at 0 time e raised to minus a 2 1 t. So, if I had atoms only in the upper level at time t equals to 0, this is n 2 0, they would the number would decrease with time exponentially like this, this is time and this is n 2. The decay constant is this curve is like e raised to minus a 2 1 t. At the same time I also know what happens if I pump in energy, right. So, let us take the other thing what happens. If energy is given to an atom, it absorbs energy and goes to the upper energy level. So, it goes from E 1 to E 2 energy. For this also Einstein said that this is a probabilistic process in which the number of atoms if that is n 1 going to upper state would be proportional to the energy corresponding to that particular frequency times a coefficient b 1 2 delta t this will be the probability times n 1. It is exactly what we said earlier. So, this u nu t times b 2 has the same dimensions as a 2 1. So, dimensions of a 2 1 are the same as u nu t b 1 2, where u nu t is the spectral energy density at frequency nu equals E 2 minus E 1 over H and the atoms are at temperature T. So, at temperature T there exists some energy density and that makes these atoms excite and they go up. So, therefore, I would write this equation in differential form, it will become d n 1 over d t would be equal to minus u nu t b 1 2 times n 1 and this is what I said has the same dimensions as a that you can check because d n 2 d t was equal to a times n 2. If these were the only two mechanisms there comes a problem and let me show that. So, let me state this first if only spontaneous emission and energy induced excitation were the only two mechanisms to exchange 
energy with radiation there will be problem and what is the problem let me state that first so again take these two energy levels e2 and e1 the number initially is n1 here and n2 here these are absorbing and going up the upper atoms are coming down so if i were to check the rate at which the population of atoms at the upper level is changing this would be equal to minus a21 n2 at the same time it is gaining atoms which are coming from ground state to excited state and that will be u nu t n1 times b12 so what do we have we have dn2 over dt is equal to minus a21 n2 plus u nu t b12 n1 and d n 1 d t will be minus of d n 2 d t which will be equal to a 2 1 n 2 minus u nu t b 1 2 n 1 because n 1 is losing number of atoms which are getting excited and gaining atoms which are coming from the excited state to down state. Now, in equilibrium at temperature T. So, we have this uh, box in which all these atoms are there and they are at equilibrium in temperature T. We have N2 and N1 independent of time that means they do not change because everything is in equilibrium and that means what we have is d n 2 over d t is equal to d n 1 over d t is equal to 0 and that gives me this implies a 2 1 n 2 minus u nu t b 1 2 n 1 is equal to 0. So, what we are writing is at equilibrium we have a 2 1 and 2 minus b 1 2 u nu t n 1 is equal to 0 and therefore, n 2 over n 1 is equal to b 1 2 u nu t over a 2 1. So, this is the result if these are the only two mechanisms. Now, let us see if we let temperature T go to infinity basically become very large then I know that u nu T is proportional to T raised to 4 and this will also go to infinity and this would imply N 2 over n 1 will go to a very large number n 2 would be much 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 greater than n 1. So, you will have large number of atoms sitting in the upper state, but thermodynamically, but from thermodynamics or more precisely from statistical mechanics. Boltzmann result is that n 2 over n 1 should be equal to e raised to minus delta e over k t. So, if t goes to infinity n 2 goes to n 1 they become equal. So, maximum number of atoms that you can have in the upper level is equal to the number of atoms in the ground level 
and that is so they will be divided equally and you will have total number of atoms divided by 2 in the 2 levels. On the other hand, look at this result as temperature goes to a very large value, the number of atoms in the upper state become very, very large and that is not acceptable, there is a contradiction. We resolve this, resolve this by introducing the concept of stimulated emission. And what that means is that this radiation which is there, if it becomes more and more, it will also stimulate atoms to come down from excited level to ground level. So, suppose there are atoms in E 2 and E 1 and there is this atom N 2 sitting here. Then what we are going to have, earlier we said that d n 2 by d t is minus a 2 1 n 2. What we are also going to say in addition, there is a possibility that if there is a radiation of a spectral density u nu t, this will also make atoms jump from upper level to lower level. So, presence of radiation makes more and more atoms also come down and this is known as stimulated emission. So, what will happen as temperature goes up, u nu t becomes larger, not only the number of atoms that are going from ground state or lower level to upper level increases, so does the number of atoms that come down from the upper level to lower level and therefore, we may achieve proper equilibrium. So, what we are going to now have the equations as is d n 2 by d t, they decay because of the spontaneous emission and also due to stimulated emission n 2 plus anyway there are atoms coming from the lower level and that will be b 1 2 u nu t n 1 and d n 1 by d t will be minus d n 2 by d t and that will be a 2 1 plus b 2 1 u nu t n 2 minus b 1 2 u nu t n 1. So, we have introduced the idea of a stimulated emission and let us see if this leads to proper equilibrium. So, again we are going to say that at equilibrium, d n 2 by d t is equal to d n 1 by d t is going to be 0. Let us see what does that give me. So, d n 2 over d t is nothing but minus a 2 1 plus b 2 1 u nu t n 2 plus b 1 2 u nu t n 1 and this equals 0 implies that n 2 over n 1 is equal to b 1 2 u nu t divided by a 2 1 plus b 2 1 u nu t. Let us see what happens if the temperature goes to a very large value. So, if t goes to infinity, so does u nu t and therefore, this implies n 2 over n 1 can be written as b 1 2 u nu t divided by b 2 1 u nu t which is equal to b 1 2 over b 2 1 which is a finite number. Not only that, it also indicates since n 2 over n 1 goes to 1 for t going to infinity that b 2 1 over b 1 2 is also equal to 1 or 
B21 equals B12. So, not only the idea of a stimulated emission preserves the statistical result that N2 over N1 is E raised to minus delta over E over KT, it also gives you a new mechanism through which this equilibrium is maintained and that is the stimulated emission. Radiation falling on atoms, some of which are excited and some of which are in the ground state or the lower energy state can not only take them to the upper state, it can also make the atoms in the upper state come down. Yeah, so, this is the concept of stimulated emission. You stimulate, you goad the atoms to come down to lower level. Now, let us work on this further. Now, you will see that the same result B21 equals B12 would also arise further considerations. So, now we have N2 over N1 which is B12 u nu T over A21 plus B21 u nu T and this should be equal to E raised to minus delta E over Kb2 where Kb is the Boltzmann constant and this gives me B12 u nu T E raised to delta E over K T is equal to A21 plus B21 u nu T. And you take B21 and u nu T term on the same side and this gives you u nu T is equal to A21 divided by B12 E raised to delta E over K T minus B to 1, which can be further written as A to 1 divided by B to 1 divided by B 1 to over B to 1 E raised to delta E over K T minus 1. So, keep this result in mind that the coefficient for stimulated emission and spontaneous emission are such that they give u nu t in this form. Now, from the Planck's formula, we know that u nu t is equal to 8 pi h nu cubed over c cubed divided by e raised to h nu over k t minus 1 this is the Planck's formula. So, let me also box this and you compare the two. From the considerations of atom radiation interaction we get u nu t is equal to A21 divided by B21 divided by B12 over B21 e raised to delta e over k t minus 1 and Planck's formula gives you u nu t is equal to 8 pi h nu cube over c cubed. 1 over e raised to h nu over k t minus 1 and this immediately implies that a to 1 over b to 1 is equal to 8 pi h nu cube over c cubed and b 1 2 equals b 2 1 and delta e u equals h nu. So, not only really we have introduced the idea of stimulated and spontaneous emissions, we have also gotten the Bohr condition that delta E is equal to H nu when the radiation comes out, it comes out in the form of a photon 
with frequency nu equals delta e over h. So, all that is recovered. So, this was a great leap towards understanding how radiation takes place. In this, Einstein also introduced the idea of probabilistic nature of radiation. That is, in classical theory, the electron revolves around a nucleus or whenever it accelerates, it just gives out radiation in a continuous manner. When we consider the particle or quantum nature, an electron in an upper state has a finite non-zero probability of making a jump or the atom has a non-zero probability of making a jump. This process is statistical and described by probability. Now, let us now explore this a little further. So, hopefully by now you, you are getting familiar and comfortable with the idea of spontaneous emission, the coefficient a to 1, the stimulated emission and the corresponding coefficient b, b 2 1 and b 2 1 is equal to b 1 2 and the energy level difference is related to the frequency of radiation is through h nu. So, let us see now what we have introduced is that d n 2 by d t an atom in upper state has this rate of coming down and when it comes down it gives out photons. So, one thing we understand from here is number 1 that the intensity of radiation will depend on A21 coefficient because if you leave an atom in the upper level, it will make more and more atoms will make transition to lower levels if A21 is larger. So, intensity would be larger. If A21 is small, then the intensity coming would be smaller. Number 2, A21 is related to the lifetime of an excited or upper level. Let us understand that how. You see, if you consider a lot of atoms N2 in the upper level and when they radiate, the radiation initially is going to be strong and slowly it will come down exponentially. slowly it comes down. If you consider only one atom, it has a probability of decaying per unit time which is equal to 1. Now, if the intensity comes down, if you look at the radiation coming out, it would be large amplitude in the beginning and slowly it decays. So, let me make this curve. This red curve is going to be like e raise to minus a 2 1 t. And now, we, we are going to connect it with damped harmonic oscillator. Suppose, the radiation is coming from a, 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 an oscillator, an electron oscillating back and forth. When it radiates, it will radiate, the energy will go down and slowly its amplitude will go down. And from Fourier theory, I know that whenever there is a profile like this, the corresponding amplitude and you I'll urge you to go back and read damped harmonic oscillator is non zero for frequencies around the main frequency omega zero which is related to this lambda as c over lambda but this is non zero near that omega 0 also with some spread. All right. So, and since the intensity is going down like this, the lifetime of the oscillator and in the in our case the oscillator is the atom 
in the excited state is 1 over a or 1 over gamma, where gamma is the damping coefficient. So, that is because I can write this as e raised to a to 1 as also e raised to minus t over tau, where tau is 1 over a to 1 and that gives you the lifetime. And this is also related to which I replot here that if you look at the profile of light coming out, it will have maximum intensity or maximum amplitude at omega 0, but would also have a width and this width is going to be related to a to 1 or the, the coefficient of decay. So, this width gives me the value of a to 1, it is also related to lifetime and experimentally if we determine the lifetime, this gives A. So, let us check that. So, what we have just said is that consider an atom like a damped harmonic oscillator in a statistical sense. So, n atoms actually give out this kind of radiation which is goes down. Then the decay constant is a to 1 and third therefore, lifetime is 1 over a to 1 and fourth a to 1 is also the width of the intensity versus frequency curve. So, these I can determine what a to 1 would be. So, let me give you now the order. The lifetime of an excited state is of the order of 10 raise to minus 8 to 10 raise to minus 9 seconds. And therefore, this implies A between two levels is of the order of 10 raise to 8 to 10 raise to 9. The second thing that you notice about this these coefficients is that a to 1 is equal to 8 pi h nu cubed over c cubed b to 1 or b to 1 is proportional to a to 1 over nu cubed. So, at high frequencies B to 1 goes down, that means becomes smaller compared to low frequencies for the same. value of A to 1. So, at high frequencies even if you were to shine light on systems the spontaneous emission will tend to dominate. So, we conclude this lecture by summarizing whatever we have learnt. One, the atom 
radiation interaction is governed by probability or statistical laws too along with spontaneous emission there is a possibility of stimulated emission also so by shining light on an excited atom or an atom in an upper state you can make it radiate so not only radiation gets absorbed by a an atom or a quantum system it can also make an atom radiate more because if it stimulates it to radiate more radiation would come out and this forms the basis this forms the basis of lasers which we will cover in the next lecture